Good evening, everyone, from our Fellowship Christian Church. I want to welcome you here. It's a Wednesday night, and uh, this is going to be a... Good evening, everyone, from our Fellowship Christian Church. A typical Wednesday here. night it's sermon. Wednesday night, and uh, this is going to be a... Good evening, everyone. The, uh, the title of this sermon is called uh, Wednesday Night Sermon. Grout and Mortar, Hold the Blocks. Um, the... Uh, it's actually part two. Is called uh, Wednesday night sermon. Grout and mortar, hold the blocks. I, I hear myself talking. It's actually part two. Is called Wednesday night sermon. Grout and mortar, hold the. Okay, all right, we got it. Thank you very much. Uh, the title of this sermon is Grout and Mortar, Hold the Blocks, and in reality, it's a couple weeks ago on a Wednesday night. I did a, a sermon called Building Blocks. <clears throat> and Building Blocks was about uh, developing prayer and personal time between you and God, a dedicated time, time uh, without your phone, without interference, uh, actual time that is God's. And I wrote this sermon and I realized that it's uh, sort of a follow-up to it, uh, as to it's about uh, the various, uh, the various, relationships that we have with God. So uh, let me start out by telling you that uh, when, when I was in Israel, uh, we went over there to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles and to be part of an intercessory group. And when we went to the, to the Feast of Tabernacles, which is uh, out in, it's, uh, in Gedi, out, out in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, uh, I was astounded that five, ten thousand people showed up. And, and uh, when I got off the shuttle bus, uh, I almost fell down because the presence of God was so strong. I, I, I've been in the presence of God before, but I, I don't think I ever walked into it like that. And anyway, what I uh, eventually figured out from there that was that God was waiting for us. You know, we, we have church and we have prayer meetings and we sit and uh, we pray in the presence of God, sort of, okay? Uh, but when we were out in the desert there, uh, God was there waiting for us and it was a completely different experience for me. Uh, it had a, a profound effect on me. Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles it is about uh, God telling his people, I want you to take a week off from work and I want you to spend it with me and your family. And that's pretty much it. You know, maybe some friends, but mostly it's about reconnecting with God. And God said, if you do this, if you do this, I'll have a blessing for you. And uh, I was surprised at what it was. So uh, in Christian terms, it was a, a worship meeting. It was a worship meeting with some speakers. Uh, but the, the worship was just off the charts. It was so amazing, uh, so anointed, because the presence of God was so strong, it affected the worship groups. And there were many different. So <clears throat> so what God was doing is... Uh, <laughs> God is inviting us to have supper with him. So I, I want you to start to become aware of this. And it may, I don't know, it may be silly to some people in the beginning, okay? Uh, when you sit down to dinner at night, not, not breakfast, not lunch, but when you sit down to dinner, be consciously aware that you're having dinner with the king, that he is presence is there with you and your family, and you are dining with the king. And if you take this seriously, uh, you'll see that there is an outcome that is completely unexpected. Um, God is coming into our lives in a different way than he, have, he has previously. He has in this time, in this season, God is drawing us closer to him. He is, I realized that building blocks was actually 
Uh, building blocks is about a 15-minute block of time where you read scripture, uh, you pray, uh, you talk to God. It, it, it is uh, time set aside strictly for God's purposes, let's say, okay? And, and as I was writing this sermon, I realized that what God is doing is he's, he is building the relationship between he and us, and he is pulling us into his world. He's not coming more into our world. He's pulling us into his world. And, and it's all the difference in the world. It's all the difference in the world. This is where, this is a place where wonderful things happen. This, this is a place where, oh, for a lack of better words, dreams come true. Let me tell you, being in the presence of God is a dream come true. So I'm, I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, this is a, a new day with new instructions and a new outcome. And uh, God will lead you in, in ways that he has not before. Uh, you, may, you may have been a couch potato for 20 years, and all of a sudden you have the desire to get up and go bring sandwiches to the poor under the bridge and completely out of character so it would seem. But it's actually your new man character coming forth. So if you begin to get ideas that you didn't previously have, if you begin to have good desires that you have not previously had, it is the Holy Spirit that is pushing you a little bit, prodding you along to become more, to become more, to, to step out further, to be the person that you were born to be. And uh, I, I don't know of anybody who has ever regretted something that God did for them, ever. And that certainly includes me. And there were things that God wanted out of my life. There were things that he brought me through that were seemed at the time absolutely insurmountable, horrible. And yet here I stand. And all of that has fallen away, and it has come to nothing. And because of God, I have come to something. God wants to pull you into his world. Now, uh, people often, if, if you start to make changes, if you start to do stuff outside of your known world, uh, People close to you will start questioning you, well, well why, what are you doing? Uh, what, why are you becoming holier than now? Uh, you're going to have to give an account. So you're going to have to think ahead of time on what you're going to tell people because they're going to quiz you because the devil wants you to stop. And, and he'll talk through the dog if he needs to. He'll do whatever he needs to do. You'll start to pray. Every time you go to pray, the dog comes over and starts bothering you. Gee, what a coincidence. And... After a while, you catch on to these little tricks and games that occur, and you become wise. Uh, the devil can't come knocking on your front door because you won't answer it. And, and you already know that anybody knocks on the back door, they're not coming in. And so he has to be innovative. The, the devil tries to outsmart you. And, and so just, just be aware of any distractions that pop up unexpectedly. Um, so anyway, if people question you about this, just tell them that you're just making an attempt to honor God in a new way, that you're, you're grateful for the things that he has done in your life, and uh, I, I, wanna, I just want to honor God, and this is uh, one of the ways I thought to do it. Now, if, if they try to talk you into doing something else, that's, that's another deal, okay? Uh, I would just say ignore it. Okay, unless the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, unless you feel led to do it. But this is really about uh, you and God. This is a very personal thing. Now, it involves everybody who belongs to him, but nevertheless, it's a personal thing. In other words, when I'm with God, it's just me and Dad. I, I'm not thinking about anybody else unless I'm praying for them. I'm mostly just being with me and Dad. Um, the Lord is in charge of the Lord's table. This is an invitation to the Lord's table. 
and uh, he's in charge of inviting. Uh, you don't get to invite anybody to the Lord's table, not this table. Okay, this is something else. This is by invitation only, and it's from God. If, if you don't feel invited, and you still and you feel called, you feel like you know this is something I should do. Just do it. Just do it. If you feel like you should do it, you're called. This is this is not rocket science. Don't overthink it. This is about affairs of the heart. This is not about a mental ascension. This is about affairs of the heart. It's in the family of love. It's in the family of relationship with God. <sighs> um, if it doesn't seem to make sense at first, like, you know, why would I want to do that? I mean, why would you want to sit down at the table for dinner and, Lord, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for being a part of our family. And thank you for blessing us, okay? You know what? First couple times, it sounds a little funny. And then even your kids will pick it up, okay? And they may do it while they're laughing and think it's funny, but they'll remember it for the rest of their lives. They'll remember it. And you're teaching your kids how to have an open relationship with God. And that is always a super excellent thing. Most of the things that we have to overcome as Christians are the reaction of our family to our attempt to walk deeper with God. Well, you spend so much time in church. You're going to church all the time. I, I, people will say stuff all the time. Well, you know why I go to church all the time? Because I like it. Because I like it. I feel good when I'm there, and I learn things that make my life better. If you can find a better reason to not go, <laughs> it would be interesting. Now, I wanna, I'm only going to give you one scripture tonight. Um, it's Psalm 3723, and I'll read it to you. It's very short, okay? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Now, uh, other versions will put that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, okay? And he delights in his way. No matter... No matter what you're going through today, no matter how the future looks, no matter anything at all, the steps of you are ordered of God. Your steps are ordered of God. This craziness that we're going through right now, ordered of God. Now, the devil can attack, but he can't do anything that God doesn't let him do. Uh, remember that. Daddy's in charge. The devil is not in charge of anything. Okay, in fact, Scripture refers to him as a toothless lion. Okay, he makes a lot of noise. He growls and barks and does all kinds of crazy things. But at the end of the day, he's got nothing. Okay, but that's if you're a child of God. If you don't belong to God, he's your worst nightmare because you have no defense against him. But that's a salvation for the end. Now, uh, if you start doing this, if you start weighing in on this and start talking to God and start attempting to be a part of the kingdom, um, you will be surprised, surprised at the changes that begin to occur in your life because God has things for people to do in this season. We are entering uh, a whole new season, and uh, we don't even know if our world is ever going to be the same again. We don't know, okay? So we are definitely entering into a new season. There are people that God wants to reach. And although you may have never evangelized in your whole life, although you have never been to a nursing home in your whole life, when this clears up, when this clears up, when, when, when we start living again, uh, you may find out that all of a sudden that there are things to do for you that you have never done before. Go do them. And if it doesn't work out the first time, go do it again. You have to allow yourself time to accept changes. Uh, we're, not, we're not always big on change. And so you may go and, oh, gee, I don't like this. Okay? Well, that's the old you talking. That is not the new you. The new you is the guy that's saying, hey, let's go with God. Let's go with God. And so you have to deal with that old man. Um, we are, 
becoming part of God's strategy for the earth. Do you know that God has a plan? God has a master plan that he's working. But everything God does, he's going to do through man. We are his hands. We are his hands and we are his feet. And we are his spokesmen. And so the father is not coming off the throne and Jesus is not coming back yet. Okay, he sits at the right hand of the Father. We have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our guide, our friend, our comforter. He is everybody you need, and there is nothing he can't do, and there's nothing he doesn't know. And so I strongly suggest that you begin to get to know him. Um, if during this time you believe that, you know what, I, I think I did get an assignment, and uh, but the first thing you want to do is check and see that it doesn't conflict with Scripture, okay? Now, the devil is going to try to screw this up, okay? And, and so he will play games if he can. So if, if what you're hearing or what you're feeling uh, doesn't really feel right, or if it feels just great, but somebody says to you, what? Uh, no, I don't think you want to do that. You may want to repray that. If somebody gives you a check, you uh, don't run with it until you get people in position of authority, people in no, uh, to say, yeah, that's God. Yeah, that's God, or yeah, that's a good thing. And, and uh, that there's scriptural reference to back it up. Uh, we're, not, we're not looking to run off the ship. Uh, we're not looking to screw this up. We're trying to fix it up. Um, this opportunity, this invitation is not open to everybody. Okay, so you cannot invite people into this situation unless God gives you permission. And that's something that uh, you're going to have to figure out how to get. Uh, you'll have to pray about it and talk to the Holy Spirit about it. And don't move on it until you're pretty sure. Pretty sure is okay. I'm talking 80% is pretty sure. 100% is I'm definitely sure. I, let's call it 98 because no matter how sure I am, there's always a smidge of a chance that I didn't get it quite right. But uh, generally, if, if I get close, God will make up the difference. And that's my version of grace. Um, if you are watching this video and you have actually listened this far, uh, you consider yourself invited. Because if you found it interestingly interesting enough to get this far into the video, into the viewing, uh, then it's you. And you don't have to wonder, let me tell you. Uh, you know how some people, uh, some people always seem to be a few months ahead of whatever's coming down the road. Uh, they'll start uh, praying a certain prayer or quoting a certain scripture that seems to be timely. And, and uh, a few months later, you'll notice that, it, man, it's everywhere in the church. Everybody's talking about it. They're printing T-shirts of it. Okay, now a lot of that is just fads. Okay, you understand that, uh, but it's also a a move of God of sorts, because uh, God allows man to exploit stuff, because what God wants to do is get His message out, and He'll deal with the expo exploitation at another time. That's not our job. That's not our job. It's not our call. Just remember, you're called to follow him. You're not called to, uh, you're not the judge of mankind. Uh, just, just look after yourself. In fact, I would say don't judge yourself very much, if at all. Um, we're not too smart, and God knows it. Um, we are being added to the movement. If you have never been a part of kingdom business, if you have never been a part of doing really anything for God, uh, prepare to uh, see some changes in your life. Uh, God is creating a whole lot of new openings, and uh, there will be new opportunities that lie ahead. Um, building blocks. If you go back uh, a couple weeks, uh, there's a title on the sermon on the website, and it says Building Blocks. If you haven't seen that sermon, you need to see it. 
in conjunction with this one. And if you begin to do this, I promise you, you will see new things in your life, new things, uh, new insights. It, you will be amazed. You'll be amazed. God is responding right now. God is moving right now. And he's looking for those who will raise their hand and say, Lord, you got something for me to do? Lord, can I help you? You know what? He gave us salvation. He went to the cross. You think he could go give some sandwiches to somebody on a street corner? You bet. You bet. Be the best thing you ever did in your life. And it takes a while to learn. There are people you can follow. Uh, there are people that uh, can teach you how to do this stuff. You know what? It, it can also be uh, the guy who's at work and uh, you go to the lunchroom every day and you, and you look who, how everybody's doing and uh, the lady's having trouble with her marriage, her and her husband aren't getting along. You know what? Uh, can, I, uh, can I say a prayer for you after work? And, and uh, you begin to let your love out. Let your love out. You don't have to have the perfect words. You know what the perfect words are? God, help them. God, God we, we ask you to touch this lady and her husband and that you would heal their hearts and remove the traumas from them so that they can remember how much they love each other. Uh, they didn't get married because they hated each other. They got, in, they got married because they saw a hope in each other. And, and so um, you're the door. You're the door to the kingdom. And, and this is the opportunity of a lifetime. You actually get to do something for God to thank him for your salvation. Lord Jesus, we believe in you and we are putting our trust in you. We wait for your instructions to direct our steps and our choices at this most trying time. Your word is the handrail that we hold on to. We let your word guard our choices. The Holy Spirit is our companion, and he is our inside man to the things of God, and we walk hand in hand with him. We thank you, Lord, for good health and continued good health. We look forward to continued provision and blessings to all of those who call upon the name of the Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you would bless President Trump and all the leaders of our country with the wisdom of God. If there was ever a time that we need the wisdom of God in this nation, it is today. It is today. Uh, this isn't about bickering and strife and opinions. This is about an intervention from God. We need God to step in and cleanse our country of this virus. It needs to come to an end, and it needs to come to an end soon. Every day, all of you who hear this, all of you who watch this video, I want you to thank the Lord that, that his word is above this virus. And I thank you, Lord. You know, it says about Jesus' death on the cross that by his stripes we were healed. Were, past tense, okay? Well, by his stripes our nation is healed. Okay, that's what we're going to believe. It's in, uh, definitely fits into his word. It is in no contradiction in any way. Uh, we are not assessing any guidelines or judgments. We're simply proclaiming. We are making a proclamation, a prophetic proclamation, that by his stripes this nation is healed. And, and let this virus fall away in the next hour and come to nothing. Okay? Uh, you, just, you just believe for all that you can. So, Lord, we thank you for directing our steps and causing us to go the right way and to accomplish the goals that you have set before us. We honor you, Lord, and we look to you for your instructions, your understanding, and your wisdom. And we lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. It's pretty bad when you have to amen yourself. Okay. Thank you for, thank you for hanging with us today. Um, I have a few things I have to do. Uh, first thing I want to do is I just want to lift up a prayer of salvation. If any of you have watched this and, and you really don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, 
let me tell you, just really easy, you have nothing to lose. And the things that you'll gain and the things that will bless you and benefit you will just invigorate your life. So just repeat this. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins and come into my life. I ask you to receive me into the family of God. I ask that you would heal my heart and my life and my relationships. I ask, Lord, that you would put me back together or put me together for the first time and, and begin to direct the steps of my life and, and teach me and cause me to make good choices so that today would be a dramatic change. It would be a turning point of my life that would be unforgettable. Lord, that's what I ask for in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, wait, they're looking at me. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for supporting the church, okay? Well, you know, we don't have a, a big group of people here anymore, and so uh, we're dependent upon you to uh, do tithes and offerings on the on our PayPal website, on, on uh, the ourfellowshipcc.org. Uh, there is a, a clicker there to donate. So if you continue to donate to the church, we still have bills to pay, and... Um, We'll all get through this. So I thank you for supporting the church. That's awesome. Um, also, you can follow us on social media, on YouTube and Facebook, uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're everywhere. Uh, Daniel and Jason are, are doing a great job, and uh, they are learning many new things, and they're both sitting there looking at me right now. So I want to thank you for watching. And uh, on that there, there's a subscribe button. And apparently it's good if you push that button. So if you've never been here, I need you to subscribe, okay? Subscribers are good. That's my new thing. <laughs> okay, so from here, from here we're going to Zoom, right? Okay. Uh, in, uh, uh, do you want to explain this? Okay. Yep. Yeah, he's not coming up here. All right. Uh, in 15 minutes, it's, uh, what, one minute to eight? In, in 15 minutes, uh, we're going we're gonna to do uh, t testimonies and corporate prayer. Uh, corporate prayer is prayer for anybody but you. And the, for those of you who don't know, what it's about is, you know, I can pray for Grandma, okay, and that's awesome, Okay. But if I have 50 or 100 people with me and they're in agreement with me, how much more powerful do you think that prayer is? I can tell you from past experience that uh, the results are pretty amazing. And, and it's definitely above everything that normally occurs. Uh, for us, God is about family. And so when you have your church family agree with you in prayer, that makes daddy happy. And when daddy's happy, good things happen. And, and uh, you know what that is? That's uh, us sharing and loving. And so corporate prayer is, is really a foundational thing. So anyway, uh, in 15 minutes, we're going to go to Zoom. And we're going to have a Zoom conference. Oh, well, I, wait, I have to open this email. Oh, oh, those of you should have gotten an email, and it gives you instructions on how to log in to Zoom, okay? And uh, do they have the number? Is that in the email? There is a number. You, you open to the site, and you sign in, and you open it up, and then there's a thing. There's a bar there, and, and it's like, uh, what conversation are you in? And Daniel sent you a number, and you type that number in and hit go, and your video will come on, and you will see one of our smiling faces, okay? And so uh, that will be at uh, 8.15. All right, so thanks very much for joining us. God bless you. I pray you have a good, safe week. I pray that your finances don't fail you, that your toilet paper doesn't fail you, and your food doesn't fail you. In Jesus' name, amen? And we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. sharp. Don't forget to subscribe. 
and give and all those things I said. Amen.